Hello Lakers, this short video will help you as a student or parent understand a little bit more about how to read and understand what goes on to a high school transcript. A transcript uh, is what you see on the screen. However, it is a record of all of your final grades and credits that you need to demonstrate your completion of a high school diploma. You will share this potentially with future employers. You might likely share this with colleges or programs that you take after high school. And there's four key components within a transcript that I just wanna briefly go over with you so you understand what you're looking at when you see a copy of this. Now, before we dive into the four components, I do want to just highlight that what goes on a transcript are final grades. And so at North Tahoe High School, um, students receive two final grades during a typical school year, one in January and one in June. Now, those grades are listed here, and I'll, I'll break those down in just a minute, but, uh, we don't report progress reports or things like that on our high school transcript. Now, if you take classes through other programs, say an online school or somewhere like Sierra College, those also typically are reported on your high school transcript and they'll show up in different places. You, you just won't see a copy of that um, on this example transcript here. To dive in, the first of the four components is gonna be this top section. And it's this top section that has some identification information. In this example, it's blocked out um, to protect privacy, but basically you'll see student name, a student ID number, a birth date, who your counselor is, and then also address and telephone information. The main thing that you wanna check on this is just making sure that it's displaying correctly. If you notice any errors or issues when you pull up a copy of your transcript, um, it's important to let us know at school so we can try to correct that and get that fixed for you. Uh, next is probably the key component or the core component of a transcript, and that is a running record of all of your academic history. Now, each of these little sub boxes, um, so for example, the first one on the upper left, towards the upper left corner that has a gray heading, it says grade nine, term one, 1920 North Tahoe High School. That's reflective of one term at North Tahoe High School. And so underneath that, you'll see the coursework that that student took during um, that semester's work. And so the far left, there's a couple like icons and indicators in this arrow on the screen you'll notice uh, below has several course tags. And so it's gonna call out what are college prep, advanced placement, if a course gets repeated, um, or if a course is what's called non-academic. And um, that plays into things like GPA calculations, which we'll talk about also in a second. The next item over is the course number. That is not as crucial uh, for you to totally understand because it's tying to Aries and the course number, but there are some some things on, on very deep levels that uh, it's just important to, to know that, that what that number means. Probably one of the most important pieces of this section is the title of the course. And you'll see that on that same box, it says Honors English 9, Spanish 1, IED, so on and so forth. That's the title of the course. And this is an important area to check to make sure that the course that you took corresponds with the course that shows up on your transcript. This should be pretty straightforward, but occasionally there are some technological glitches that we catch after the fact. Uh, and you're like, well, I didn't take uh, you know, PE Health, I took PE too. Um, and so it's just something if you notice, and please help double check our work, if you notice things um, not looking quite right, it's always worth asking a question. It very well could be accurate, um, but maybe just describe differently within the um, computer system or something like that. But it's worth a check to make sure because you don't wanna have any inaccuracies on your high school transcript. The one uh, directly to the right of the name of the course is the grade that you earn. So a grade of A, B, C, D, F uh, does indicate plus and minus, and then you might see uh, pass with a P or a fail or an NP on there um, as well. The two columns with what you see on this screen of five and five, the first set of numbers um, after the grade is the credits attempted. So, so that basically means this is how many credits that you are attempting within this, this course. And then completion is the next one, how many you actually earned. And so if you pass a class, you're going to earn the five credits. Um, you don't earn partial credit in courses, so it's essentially all or nothing. So uh, unless you fail a course, you're gonna have attempted five, completed five, or whatever the number is related to that class. If you do fail a course um, with an F or like an NP, um, then you'll see like an attempted of five, and if that grade of B next to Honors English 9 was an F instead, that five would on the far right would then equal zero. So that means you're completing zero. All right, at the bottom of each of these boxes, you'll notice there's 
there's a total attempted credits and a total completed credits, as well as what we call a total GPA. We'll talk about GPA down towards the bottom. Um, and then each term lives underneath here. And you'll notice that you might have, if you take classes like I mentioned at other schools, you might have multiple boxes for a given term or a given school year, and that's okay. Um, as well as if you take classes through other schools, or maybe you transferred into North Hall High School at some point. Uh, the third box that we're worried about is kind of directly below it towards the left hand side and that's where we share the information about your GPA. That's your grade point average. So the grade point average, there's another video if you're curious about how grade point average is calculated and what some of them different mean, but I'm going to cover at a high level what each little box means. But um, there's two columns in your grade point average. So one is weighted and one is not weighted. Uh, what weighting means is for things like uh, AP, ex AP courses. So uh, the, on the, if we go back to one of those boxes, maybe towards the student's 12th grade year, you'll see AP English Literature and that little A next to that means that it's a weighted course. That means it's a harder course and you get some extra recognition for completing it and it basically bumps that GPA up slightly. And that's why you see those two, those two columns of weighted and non-weighted being slightly different for the student. Um, the non-weighted basically just takes out any extra bonus points that a, a more rigorous course or a more advanced course uh, allots to a grade. The rows that you see, there's three different rows. There's two academic GPAs, that's what ACAD means, A-C-A-D. One of them, the first one, has 9 through 12, so that includes ninth grade. So that includes everything that you see on this list that essentially doesn't have an asterisk next to it, a little star. Um, so for example, in that ninth grade box we were looking at earlier, PE Health would not be counted in these two columns, or these two rows, I'm sorry. Um, the second row down on this GPA box uh, includes academic GPA, but only for 10th through 12th. The reason that's important is because that's how our CSU and UC college systems in California calculate GPA for admissions. They don't actually calculate GPA with ninth grade included. Um, so this gives you a, a pretty close representation of what they would be looking at in relation to a high school student GPA when you're applying. Um, and the last one is total GPA, and that basically includes any graded course, just keeping in mind that pass, no pass, classes are not counted towards GPA, um, only those graded classes of A, B, C, D, and F. Right below that you see the total number of credits completed and attempted, and all of this box is cumulative, meaning um, underneath each of those little squares for each semester, you can see a total credits completed as well as a total GPA. That's semester based, so that's just for that term. This box down below is actually for the entirety of high school and it gets updated as terms get added to your transcript. All right, so the last one. This one is also important, especially for tracking your progress towards a high school diploma. Um, this is the lower right hand corner where it says credit summary. This is the high school graduation requirements. Um, and so you'll see the total credits required. So you earn credits by passing classes. We talked about that before. And so as we work down, there's a subject area on the left, like English 9, English 10, and so on. The credits required for each, so essentially 10 credits is roughly equivalent to, it is equivalent to one full year of a course, so two five credit semesters. Um, and so you can see credits required, and then the next column will say credits completed. So how many student, how many courses this did the student take in this area? This student example is a 12th grader who had graduated, so if they have completed all of their credits. If you're looking at this as a younger student or student currently in high school, you will notice that you probably have some completed and some still needed. Um, that's pretty normal. And then the far right column, the student has cleared all their needed credits, but until things are completed, they will show up under the needed category. And as you complete those, they'll move over to the completed ones. So by graduation, you need to have all of those items on the right hand side completed um, to earn your diploma. At the bottom, one thing you will notice, I will just mention, is that you have the electives category. Um, and you'll notice this particular student, they required 60 electives and they actually completed 78. That's also not abnormal. It's pretty typical for a student to do that, um, especially when they're potentially taking additional courses or, or applying to college or things like that. Um, it's not uncommon to see 240, 250, or even 260 credits, depending on how a student is approaching their education. Um, and then once that item above, so for example, once math is completed, so once you have three math classes, say you took an additional fourth year math course, um, that does actually fall underneath the electives category. So that's a rough outlook on how to take a look at your transcript, you can access this transcript through your student and parent ARIES account. And so you can print a PDF. It will just give you an unofficial uh, 
kind of uh, stamp on there, but you can view this and see what it looks like. I do encourage students to take a look at your transcript once a year, um, just again, to make sure that things are looking the way that you're kind of expecting them to, that there's no surprise grades, no, nothing missing or added, um, that you don't expect to be there. And it's just helpful for us to catch things before it becomes an issue down the road. So checking it annually is a, is a really strong recommendation. Um, and this information does get sent out to colleges, it gets sent out to employers down the road. Um, many times when you're applying for a job or a college application or an internship or scholarship, they will ask for a copy of your high school transcript. And typically this is actually what's used to prove that you graduate high school. Your high school diploma usually just sits in a wall, picture frame or something like that. You usually don't send a copy of your high school diploma. Uh, that you earn a, at, when you walk across the stage, but you typically send a copy of your high school transcript and that's what verifies that you graduate from high school. So hopefully that's helpful. Uh, if you have any questions about your high school transcript, please reach out to us at North Tower High School. We'll be happy to clarify any additional questions.